Crafty Friends, welcome to today's video. This is another in our embossing folder technique series. Today I'm going to create this card. It's a birthday card featuring candles. So the first thing that I'm going to do is ink up some mixed media paper. This is De La Rowney mixed media paper. I'm just adding some colour to it because I want to cut my candles from coloured cardstock. So I'm using Catherine Pooler inks today. And I think these are all from the party collection. We've got It's a Boy and Cummerbund from the TV Blues and Garden Party and Mint to Be from the Greens. I'm not looking for perfect blending because the pieces that I'm going to cut from this card are going to be very narrow, they're going to be candle shaped, so you're not really going to see any unevenness of blending. So now I've got my first uh, layer of colour down. I'm going to go in and put a bit of the green on the blue and a bit of a blue on the green so that we've got some variation in colour across the whole of the panel. To give this panel a bit of metallic sparkle and shine I'm using this very pale gold from my hybrid Prima Metallic Accents palette. Some of these paints are from the original Metallic Accents palette and some are from the Pastel and I've just put all my favourites in one palette for ease of use. I think this very light gold is from the Pastel palette and I've added a little bit of water and I'm just gonna splatter on the gold. I want quite a lot of splattering so that when I cut this down each of my strips of paper has plenty of gold on it. I'll give this a dry with my hair dryer and then come back to you. So there we have a lovely greeny bluey gold spattered bit of cardstock. To create my candles I'm going to use this strip die because it gives me that lovely beveled edge you get with die cuts plus it gives me even size strips. You can if you haven't got a die like this just use a trimmer and then you can cut them to whatever width you want but I'm going to use this today because it's because uh, I got it to hand and quite frankly I just love using this die. So there are my strips they're looking really good. Before I put my candles on the card I want to give them a bit more texture so I'm going to take each candle and pick an embossing folder and run it through my cuttle bug. Where did I put the other bit? There it is and we'll just see what the uh, actually this one Think it would work better if it went like that so I get more pattern on my candle so here we have our embossed candles I cut them in half and ran them through the cuttle bug with various embossing folders so we've got flowers spots a rope pattern diagonal stripes a swirly whirly a crisscross and some stars for my sentiment, I'm going to use this happy birthday stamp and I'm going to pop it nice and straight around about there, maybe slightly over a bit and I'm going to stamp it in black ink so it stands out really well amongst those candles. So this card panel is about four and a half inches by six and a half inches and it's mixed media paper because that's just what I happen to have to hand next to me. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to arrange my candles around my sentiment, picking the right end, not where I cut it with the scissors but with the other end. If I do decide to use the other end, have the other end sticking up, then I might neaten it up and bevel it with an embossing tool. So 
something like that I think. I do want to leave enough room here to add some flames in a minute. To stick down my candles I'm going to use this double sided double sided adhesive craft foam. This is from Styx 2 and it's a very thin, only a few millimetres thick craft foam because I only want to give them a little bit of dimension. I don't want to, I need to cut this down a bit, do that and then I'll talk. Yeah, as I was saying, I don't want them to have too much dimension. I want them just to be lifted ever so slightly off the card and this craft foam will do that. So then we have all our candles. I managed to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on there. I'm just going to run my scissors along here and trim off the overhang. I like the way that looks. And so now it's time to add our wicks. I'm just going to draw with a black pen a wick coming out from the top of each candle. Now I don't have any flame dies, but I do have these leaf dies that might be able to masquerade as flames. So I'm gonna try cutting them out with gold glitter cardstock and seeing if they will make decent flames. So there we go. I might chop the stem off of the leaf to make them look a less leafy, but I think they do a pretty good job of being flames. And they've got a bit of movement to them because they're sort of curvy leaf shape. So I'm gonna cut one, two, three, four, five more, and then uh, do a little bit of surgery on them to take the stems off. Of course, if you haven't got a leafy flame type die at all, uh, you can always just freehand, cut freehand, I do like the die look though. They do look just that little bit more finished with that unique die edge. Uh, I'm gonna get my little scissors out, my detail scissors and trim off the stems. So there we have some flames that used to be leaves. I think they are going to do the job nicely. It's always good when you've got a die that can masquerade as something else and pull double duty. What I'm going to do is dip them in a little bit of glue, dab it off on my glass mat and put them on there, give them a, a jaunty angle. I'm trying to kind of alternate the angle that I put them on so that even though some of these are identical they don't necessarily look that way because they're facing in different directions and having them in different directions adds a bit of energy and movement to the whole card this panel is a bit of an unusual size did i say it was four and a half by almost six and a half for no other reason than that is the size that I cut that bit of paper to. So I'm going to make my card blank bespoke, as it were, by putting tape runner on the back of this, lining this up in the corner to give a narrow border. That's probably just under a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch, and popping that down. And then I'll get my big scoring board and pick that line there because that will give me a similar similar size border at the top fold that so it's all squared up and then trim off the excess I'm tempted to squeeze some little embellishments like Nouveau drops or homemade enamel dots or just regular enamel dots on there. 
but I think that's going to overcrowd everything and just make it far too busy. One thing you could do to adapt this card a little is before you cut your strips, after you've inked your paper, put a strip of clear packing tape, this stuff, over your coloured card, then cut the strips, then put them through the embossing folders and that way your candles will look glossy. You could also create a coloured mat or put this panel on a coloured card base. I think that would uh, bring something to it, have a card base in a colour from here, a green or a blue, and that would bring everything out and really make things pop. If you wanted to bring even more energy and vibrancy to it before you stuck your candles on, you could do a little bit of um, splattering in a metallic watercolour, maybe a blue or a green or another gold. But as these are already got spatters on the candles, I think this card in particular has, has enough spattering going on. And something you can do with inked panels that you've run through an embossing folder is you can use a emery board or some fine sandpaper this is a nail buffer thing and you can go over it not too hard to squash the embossing but if you rub over it it takes the ink off with that top layer of card the top layer of the card rather and your raised portions will be the colour of the cardstock underneath the ink, in this case white. But it does bring the raised element of your embossed card to the surface. It, it really lifts it up, it highlights it. That's the word I'm looking for. This is what it looks like with no buffing. And that's what it looks like with buffing by sanding off the inky layer of paper. And that's a really good technique. I think it's not right for this card, but I thought I'd throw it in there to give you an idea maybe of, of what you could do on another card or this card, whatever you fancy. Right, I think that'll do for now. That's this card done and a few extra ideas thrown in for good measure. Do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.